George Parrott was a French-born outlaw of the Old West who is not remembered by his criminal actions, but by the strange events that took place after his death. Please subscribe to be notified of the next video. Parrott was born in France in March 1834 and traveled to America at an early age. Little else is known about his early life or how he ended up in the Wild West decades later. He was a member of a loose-knit group of outlaws that operated in the Wyoming area. They were active in the Powder River country, robbing pay wagons and stagecoaches for cash and taking any money and jewelry from the passengers. The leader of the group was called Sim Jan, and other members included Frank McKinney, Tom Reed, and Dutch Burris. In August 1878, the gang made plans to hold up a Union Pacific train near the Medicine Bow River. Their plan was to switch the tracks on an isolated stretch to derail the train. However, as the outlaws hid in the bushes waiting, a section crew arrived and discovered the tampered rail. The gang sat by in frustration as the tracks were repaired and the train disappeared from sight. A posse was soon formed to apprehend the outlaws. Two lawmen named Whittlefield and Vincent tracked them to Rattlesnake Canyon where the gang was hiding out. However, the lawmen were spotted by a lookout. There was a gun battle as the outlaws emerged from nearby bushes and the two lawmen were killed. After this, the gang took the victim's weapons and money and split up, heading in different directions. The dead lawmen were discovered and a $10,000 reward was offered for the bandits. The reward was later doubled One gang member was killed the next month while trying to rob a Black Hills stage line. Dutch Burris was the first to be apprehended and was taken to Rollins for trial. Dutch never made it to the trial. His train was stopped by an angry mob in Carbon and he was taken from the train and hung from a telegraph pole. A few months later, in February 1879, Big Nose and several other gang members made plans to rob a local merchant named Morris Kahn, who was traveling east with a big load of cash. They ambushed Kahn's large convoy 10 miles past the Powder River crossing near Terry, Montana. The convoy had become strung out over a long stretch, and the bandits caught them as each group slowly emerged around a turn in the trail. They ended up capturing somewhere between three and fourteen thousand dollars. The next year, in July, Big Nose George was vigorously frequenting Miles City saloons. One night, as the liquor loosened his lips, he boasted of the attempted train robbery and murders. A telegraph was sent to Rollins, and in no time, Sheriff Rankin of Carbon County was sent to apprehend George and bring him back to Wyoming. Parrott was arrested, taken back to Wyoming, and sentenced to hang on April 2nd, 1881. But while being held in the Rollins, Wyoming jail, he made an escape attempt that was foiled by the jailer's wife. News of the escape spread through Rollins and a mob of people started making their way to the jail. While the jailer lay recovering, men with pistols burst into the jail and dragged Parrot from his cell. 
Waiting for him outside was a lynch mob of more than 200 people. Around March 22, 1881, 47-year-old Big Nose George was strung from a telegraph pole and hung to death. Doctors Thomas McGee and John Osborne took possession of Parrott's body after his death, hoping to study the outlaw's brain for clues relating to criminality. The top of his skull was sawn off and given to a young girl acting as nurse. The girl, Lillian Heath, became the first female doctor in Wyoming and is rumored to have used the skull cap as an ashtray, pen holder, and doorstop. A death mask was created from his face, and skin from his thighs and chest were removed and sent to a tannery in Denver, where they were made into shoes and a medical bag. Dr. John Osborne wore the shoes to his inauguration ball after being elected the first Democratic governor of Wyoming. Parrott's dismembered body was stored in a whiskey barrel while experiments continued and was finally buried behind McGee's office. This barrel was discovered on May 11, 1950 by construction workers building the Rollins National Bank in Rollins, Wyoming. You can still see the shoes and death mask at the Carbon County Museum in Rollins, while his skull cap is on display at the Union Pacific Museum in Omaha. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Check the description for links to cool videos. And be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next video.